<laughs> that's that's gone. Okay, people, welcome back to another. Ooh, it's play day. I know I've gotten behind. I've gotten the customizing bug, and I can't stop. And I think one more thing to get into the play day. And I've done enough for two play days. These two play days also have a lot of my own work. And a lot of it's inspired by other people. Or it's because I was sent something or bought something where I want the whole figure or the whole team. But there are some sprinklings of other people's work. Because that's what I love best. Is showing off just all the love and care that other people put into their work. It's just a play day. That's, that's what it comes down to. First up, let's crack open this Hasbro Star Wars Black Series Disney Exclusive Galactic Creatures pack. Because it doesn't deserve its own review, I've struggled with going through this in a full-length review along with the First Order pack, which I'll get on the next play day, and I couldn't do it. Because <laughs> most of the video is just going to be, well, it looks like what we already have, just in different colors. Really, we have these in one form or another already. The Porgs are reused sculpts, and I can't remember where we got the Porgs in the first place. I'm struggling to find much difference between the two of them, and it's pretty much the same for this one. New on the left, old on the right. Oh, well, the black to the tail doesn't come up as far as the old one. Articulated wings. If I remember right, Porgs were pretty easy to get. The boggling is slightly harder. I think that was a game GameStop exclusive? And here, comparing to the one we already have, the color difference is more apparent. But the eyes on the old one is definitely painted better than the new one. The Minoc was a San Diego exclusive that came with Hoth, Han, and Leia, I think. And in this case, the differences... I, I, I can't really tell if there's any difference. But I always like this thing because it's a sucker fish. And I love the translucency to the wings. Then there are the monkey lizards. If you missed out on the San Diego Jabba the Hutt version, you can use this as salacious, or you can just use this anywhere you want. The huge difference is they added knee joints to the new one. The old one essentially just sat there. The joints were there, but you couldn't do anything with them. The new one, you can get some posing to it, and standing. I think that's what I was looking forward to the most. The tail is on a hinge and swivel, so you can put it around here, looking around. But this was the one I was looking for. I'm still making my way through Clone Wars, so I never saw Hondo with his pet monkey lizard. I guess it was called... Uh, Pick Muck Muck. No, I didn't look that up. My phone's not right down there. Not only that, the color scheme on this is way more interesting than this. Plus, it's kind of fooshy. Another random thing I picked up recently was the Mattel Lightyear Battle Equipped Zyclops. You cannot tell me that there was no inspiration taken from the classic Marvel Mandroids. And I am not the first person to have this idea. I've seen lots and lots of pictures of it. Was that only held in by two rubber bands? Put this cover piece on, which is spring-loaded. Well, boom, that's not going to put any eyes out. What about this? Oh, sh shit! That'll put an eye out. Warning, choking hazard, small parts. Don't shoot it in your mouth. But like I said, this is definitely going to be a mandroid on my Marvel shelf. All I got to do is sand off or acetone the Z off here and maybe back here. Put a different logo or just leave it yellow. Got a blaster hand, got a claw hand, and the articulation isn't bad. You're going to get some movement out of it. 90 elbow. Hmm. Some knee to it. Not a lot of foot though, side to side. But the head turns. Yeah, color, shape, everything. And with more customizing, you can make it pure Marvel Mandroid. Maybe dribble this out, put a face behind there or something. I don't have the actual Marvel Legends build a figure Mandroid, but it shares parts with Ironmonger, doesn't it? It's substantial next to the standard Bucky Cat body. Not a huge customizing endeavor, but. I glued down the collar piece on the Marvel Legends Age of Apocalypse Sabretooth. But that doesn't mean it's not customizing. Little tweaks to make the figures better in your eyes. Head swaps. That's customizing. Out of the package, this was pegged into the hole in the back and nothing else. It would just kind of flop around. It would ride up. You could see a gap through there. And I could have just glued it here. But what I did was snip the peg off so I could move it up here and down in the front. I just think that's a little bit better balanced because as is... It was kind of riding high, or at least I felt like it did. And no, I'm not buying the Age of Apocalypse figures. I'm buying Exiles figures. That's why this head's on here, because he's just hanging with Blink and Morph and saving the multiverse. Another little tweak I've done recently is fixing the eyes on the Diamond Select Lord of the Rings Gandalf. And no, I'm not buying Lord of the Rings either. This is actually for Veebs. He hit me up after getting his and asked if I could fix the eyes, because they were very, very... Are they dead looking? Or they kind of just, he spaced out completely. But I am way past my eye painting prime. I can't see. I'm too shaky. They're too small. So I resorted to these again. Just cut them out. Water slide them into the eyes. 
and I didn't do anything else. I just kind of covered what was there. That came out pretty nice, or at least I think so. Much more lifelike, much more what we saw in the movies. Let's jump back to this because I finally found a bandolier for my random gray-haired Wookiee. I showed most of this on the last play day where I was building a black chrysanthemum and this was the test drive. As I was widening it, I wasn't tapering it, so it just came out <laughs> straight up and down. But it is shorter and more squat, so I thought, you know what, let's just paint it gray and I have a random Wookiee on the shelf. Then I ran into the problem of the Black Series figures having this sculpted part where a bandolier is supposed to lay, but I didn't want to throw Chewbacca's on there. Because you look at Chewbacca's and you go, that's Chewbacca. But I recently picked up the Diamond Select Chewbacca who came with options when it came to bandoliers. There was either the Solo version or the OT version. And if you haven't seen my unfinished custom video, I got the Diamond Select Chewbacca to make another Black Chrysanthemum because I have a problem. So this is the solo bandolier with the extra strap cut off. I think it kind of changes it up a bit. It's still Chewbacca-ish, but with these cylinders, I guess that went to his shotgun in that movie? I can't remember. And the different kind of pouch here, it, it changes it up enough. But because of that new Black Chrysanthemum build, I have more Wookiee parts that I'm going to make another, I guess. So I'll need a <laughs> it's never ending. It just continues on and on. That's what customizing is. Once you get a taste for it and you get back into the game after you've been out for a little while. <sighs> you know, like redoing customs that you did many, many years ago. Here is my astonishing X-Men Cyclops. It uses the Spider UK body, which adds a little bit of bulk to it, but I feel like that's better than the Bucky Cat body that we keep getting Cyclopses on. I mean, Cyclops was called Slim for years, but he got more muscle mass over the years. The thing that got me into doing Astonishing X-Men Customs again was some 3D printed heads from Fan Plastic 4. That's just Astonishing X-Men Cyclops. That was also the time of lots and lots of seam lines. For the seam lines, I used Bead and Stretch. Now I picked this up quite a few years ago because I ran across it and I thought, well, maybe someday I'm gonna make a figure with some seam lines on it. And I did, eventually. So I don't know how available this is now. It is soft, it is stretchy, it's gonna lay where you want it to go. In fact, the legs are a little too muscular. That's why it kind of looks... My problem was sticking it to the figure because super glue took a little too long for my liking. I couldn't hold this stuff in place long enough for it to dry. So that's where this came along. Apply a little super glue, lay it on there, and then you hit it with the light and it's instant dry. So everything kind of fell into place, you know, after hoarding parts and pieces for years. I'm not sure if I like the orangey yellow though. He works well with Beast, which again, this is the Marvel Legends body, the Fan Plastic 4 head, full paint job, except for the yellow. Once I get to Wolverine and Kitty, I'll pick a yellow that I'll come back across and I guess match them up a little bit better. For the moment, the X-Men shelf grows. And it's been a little bit since I've had a Greedo 737 Astromech to show off. And honestly, I love this thing. It's Fushi, he knows the way to my heart. He's painted quite a few of these at this point and it just keeps getting better and better, if that's even possible. The Bandai model kits were the first one to give us an actual 112 scale Astromech. Since then, the Mofex and the SH Figure Arts have both taken the top tier when it comes to action figures of R2-D2, but the model kits are just as versatile. More, because you put them together, you can do different things with it, you can paint them, you can paint any action figure, but the model kits are a lot more susceptible to paint. They're just fun on top of fun, you know? Go check out his Instagram because the last time I looked, he had quite a few available if you're into different droids, whether they're made up or accurate to some kind of source. Any and all of them, that's what I always say. And then finally, it would not be a play day without some Rebel 10 custom soft goods. Look what she did for my mastermind. This is amazing. She of course tailored the overcoat. The body I used underneath was the Loki series Mobius that was exclusive to Target, I think. And then the head came with the Amazon exclusive Wolverine 5 pack. All together, you get some classic X-Men villain goodness. I did tag down the shoulders right here and right here because it being cloth and it having you know a mind of its own it was sticking out a bit here i wanted it to lay over the shoulders and i had to tie these laces which i mean look at my finger i can't even keep it still just imagine me 
tying that tiny little bow. But now I can have a wind guard for my Hellfire Club and a wind guard for my Brotherhood of Evil Mutants. So at the end of the day, <laughs> a play day is never a bad day. I gotta come up with something better there because saying day three times in a row, it bugs me. But there you go, some customs, some tweaks, some fixes, some other lines, other people's work. It's a beautiful day. Go check out Greedo737. Go check out Rebel 10 Customs. Go check out Fan Plastic 4. Show them some love because, man, there's, there's so much great work. I, I end every play day like this. There's so much great work out there. Also, like I mentioned at the first, I'm about to dip into even more play day. Whenever this goes up, the next one will be next week. If you enjoyed this play day, comment, like, subscribe. Much, much love to the plus if you're interested in seeing videos early or in a position to help out the channel, patreon.com. Wherever you may be watching this, I'll always catch you on the foosh. And anybody that's known me for any amount of years, or especially back in the day, I liked to show pictures of my customs, but I never liked to show people my customs in person or anything or on video. That wasn't even a consideration back then. But I'm getting older and I'm getting softer in my ways, I think. I don't need everything to be 100% accurate. I don't need everything to be 100% perfect. If it makes me happy, that's all that matters. But it doesn't match what's on the comic page. Eh, I'm cool with that. Look at the paint slop you did on that line. I did my best. That's what it boils down to.